you're just like, I'm so hungry and I'm willing to sacrifice to stay competitive. And you were telling me that most people aren't willing to stay competitive for a long time. And that's what's really, I've seen and admired about you is how you're able to buy, you know, the Houston Rockets, how you're able to do these big projects and buy these things because you're so competitive consistently over decades where most people go in for three to five years, something doesn't work out and then they stop their competitive edge. So how do you keep that edge? You know, it's really interesting because I, I, I did an interview yesterday with somebody who's really popular right now and and they're very young and yet they said they already have those those valleys where they went into a funk like they were burned out. Right, after like and two years yeah, of working hard or something. Yeah, 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 and I just said, you know what's funny is I've never had a burnout, ever. I've been, and I've been, I've been going like this for, for uh, a long time. <laughs> Decades. 35, 40 years wow. even. I mean, I started going at it in my teens hard and, and uh, I never had that burnout. I, mm. And I think that's kind of a state of mind that uh, if you, you're going to get burnt out if you want to get burnt out. But, but I, I always was going like this and so I just kind of felt like I'm so fortunate to, to, to have it going. Why should I ever let the momentum go the other way? Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, one of my great sayings is there's positive people and negative people. And, and when you're with a negative person or you're with a positive person, one of two things is gonna happen. The negative person is gonna make the positive person negative, yeah. or you're gonna take the negative person and make them positive. So wow. I've always paid attention to who I've always been around also. And, and uh, I never wanted to be around people that didn't want to achieve. Right. And, and, but I've never even come close to saying, I'm done, I'm burnt out, I'm not doing this anymore. Right, how do you spot the people who are truly wanting to achieve and who have that positive energy. Because sometimes people, you could bring people on your team and they could have that in the beginning, but they could kind of lose that or they could spin off a negative cycle. Do you, are you very loyal to the people that you have on in your companies? You know, it's, you give them multiple chances or is it like, okay, enough is enough, like no, cut the road. What a great question that is because, uh, I even list a bunch of people at the front of this book yeah, who, really, that, yeah. who really helped make me become who I am. Because even though I'm the leader, I'm the bull, you are dependent on people when you build a company mm -hmm. my size of 60,000 people. That's and, it, and, and pretty small, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I truly, I truly uh, probably have 25 vice presidents that average 25 years. Wow. Okay, I, and I tease my people about this all the time. Wow. I go, I never, ever, in the last 35 years have probably lost direct answers to me, maybe one or two people. Mm. And so why are y'all losing them every year? Right, <laughs> right. And, and, and so if, when people ask me, what, what are you most proud of? And I, I think it's the people that truly deal with me on a day-to-day -day basis. Even my assistants, I have one for 27 years wow. and I'm one for 26 years. Wow. You know, they truly grew up with me, you know, that were young girls. <laughs> not right, young right, girls right, 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 right. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, I, and so, and I think it is, if they'd tell you, they'd say, that's the hardest son of a bitch to work for in the world, I but I would imagine. not work for anybody else. Wow. I think that's what they would all tell well, you. I mean, in a world where it seems like everyone wants to change jobs every year or two because they want something new and exciting, how do you cultivate that uh, culture or environment where they're like still excited every year? Is it because you're acquiring new companies all yeah, the time? I, I think and, that's part of it is that they know that, that we're the bull and, and that, uh, you know, even in tough times, if I call them into my boardroom, it's not, hey, we're getting bought out. It's who are we buying because mm. we eat the weak in bad times. So, wow. so it's, I think it's leadership, you know, respect. It's, it's, it's knowing that, mm. that, that we're the bull out there in our industries. And, and for those uh, who don't know what you mean by the bull who haven't read the book, what does that mean to be the bull? Just you're the ones always that everybody else is worried about. Mm. It, it's we bought a couple of companies in the last week. Right. And it's because we were opportunist and we're the ones who can always deliver. Wow. And and we're the ones who have the funding, the due diligence to do it quickly. We outwork people. We, you know, uh, a, a lawyer of mine who handles all the M&A, he was at the office from 9 a.m. Sunday a week ago till Monday night at 9 p.m., 36 straight wow. hours getting a deal done. Okay, it's just, it's just a culture of we 
are the best. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, not that there's not great companies out sure, there, sure. and you know we're just still in the whole world, you know, a company. Right. But but uh, and and what we do. And, and doing mergers and acquisitions in the restaurant business or gaming business or whatever, aquariums, amusement parks. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we outworked everybody to, to get the Houston Rockets. I mean, my team during Hurricane Harvey, when everybody was flooding, was still at the office trying to get that contract signed because we wanted it done by wow. Monday of Labor Day. And, and uh, During the big flood in Houston, yeah, is that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. And, and, wow. Uh, but the Houston Rockets went on the market on July 17th, and we signed the deal up on September the 5th for the most money ever paid for a professional sports team. Now and why, so it's, yeah. it's just saying we're going to get it done before anybody else can. Now, why pay the most premium? Why not try to, like, create the win-win, get the best deal for yourself? Why say I'm going to overpay? Maybe it's not an overpay in your mind, but why do that? And when everyone's telling you, ah, maybe that's a little too much, you know. Because I, I, I listen, I listen, and I'm going to tell you what I heard. Mm. I heard from some very, very smart people, and this is one of the reasons that the book's titled "Shut Up and Listen" is because I do listen, and and um, I had some really smart people who know a lot of people who went after sports franchises say they quit too soon, it's the biggest regret they ever had. Meaning they it, sold the business, no, 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 no. They, they went after, say, the LA Clippers, they went after the Golden State Warriors, they went after, and and they and people that could afford to do it. And and they just said, oh, I'm not gonna pay that extra 100 million or 200 million or whatever. And then they had to go buy a team in the years to come somewhere else, not in their hometown. Right, right. Or a minor and, league and team pay more, or something, or what, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah. And, and, wow. and so I was told, there's you know you there's never been a team sell for less <laughs> in sports and and it's just a mistake you don't make and so I listened to people and said you you could regret this and and it's kind of funny but I already knew I was not going to lose okay I was not going to lose this opportunity and when other people I even had the the Tad Brown who who I've known for years who runs the business side of the team even today call me at one point and said, y'all aren't in the room kicking tires like some of the other people. Are you losing interest? I said, no, Ted, I haven't lost interest at all. I said, everybody else is in there trying to justify how do you pay $2 billion, because they made it really clear that they wouldn't sell it for under $2 billion. Wow. They're all trying to figure out how you pay that for it. I was out there making sure I could raise the money. And so... I like that. And, and no, seriously, because... You weren't even thinking. You were no, saying, I'm not, going... Oh, right. Yeah. I knew that the team on a bad year is going to make $40 million and on a good year is going to make $90 million, okay? I knew that, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'd known Tad for 15 years. But if you start trying to say, okay, if it makes $40 million or it makes $80 million, it's take do you, me do you pay $1.9 million billion or $1.8 billion or $2.2 billion? It has nothing to do with it, okay? Okay, and and so while everybody else and and was doing due diligence that way, even people that have a lot more money than me, okay, they're trying to get there to and, and they the miss the, they miss the box, okay, they, they 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 were looking at the wrong thing instead of realizing this is a ten year play, and I could promise you one thing, I bought this team in two thousand and what sixteen, yep. In 2026, it'll be worth $3 billion. Really? Okay, yes, okay. It's already moved up in value. So, so it, it's, just, it's, it's just the feel and, 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 mm. and knowing what to do and not getting caught up in the due diligence that doesn't matter. And I think one of the reasons I've been successful is because nobody does due diligence on an acquisition more than my team does. Mm. But it's it's just don't get caught up in, in the things that don't matter. What? Like price of a few hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and you know what's so funny? And then you know how I got their attention? Everybody else wrote letters. They said, okay, we, we want everybody's letter of intent today. Mm. Everybody had all, all the kind potential of ends, buyers. And all yeah, the potential yeah. buyers. Everybody had all kind of ins and outs and everything. And you know what I did? I said, I'm going to put up $100 million non-refundable, no financing contingency, oh no NBA approval contingency, and if something happens, I'll walk away and lose it.
Okay, so that with the previous owner, yeah, with the with previous, the previous ownership. owner, yeah. yeah. Wow, no one else was willing. To Nobody do that. else will do that. And you were willing. But that's to... the second time I've done that, and it worked for me because my great casino in Lake Charles, right outside of Houston, I did the same you thing. Did Fifty million, right? Or forty million? Fifty million, yeah, yeah, fifty yeah. million, yeah. So it's worked for me twice. <laughs> what is? I hope I have the opportunity to do it again. That is uh, yeah. something I want that bad. <laughs> <laughs> what is the things that people should be looking at? You mentioned people are looking at the wrong things. They're thinking about the price or the other things, what should they be thinking about if they want to acquire something? Whether you're a small business owner that wants to acquire something for a hundred grand, or you're you know, a billionaire like yourself trying to acquire something for 2.2 .2 billion, what is the thing they look for? Well, if it's something that you really, really want and you can afford and it doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. uh, you should just go get it, okay? If it's, Why, is that for the peace of the, mind? Just for, for the, the peace of mind and so you never regret it, okay? Mm. I, uh, I can go back 20, 25 years ago and I've been asked this the last few days, what is, I had a chance to buy this unbelievable car collection about 25 years ago that had great muscle cars right when they were coming. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And I was really buying it at a bargain because the father had died, the son was selling it, didn't give money. a damn. Yeah. And, and, and I, I lost a deal over a couple hundred thousand dollars that today if I own that, I would just walk in there and say, this is mine, yeah. I just love it. And, and, I, and I learned a lesson, and, and 25 years later, that's the one deal that comes back and haunts me because I negotiated a little bit too hard for something that really mattered. Mm. Now, if so, now, let's look at in a box of a real business deal. You can't get caught up emotionally. There's always another deal. And I walk away from deals all the time. Really? All the time, because there's, there's always another deal. But you know what? There's only so many great car collections. So there's only one NBA teams. team in your own hometown, right. okay? And so there's certain things you don't worry about. Yeah. And that's where you have to be smart and say, there's always another casino to buy to or buy. another yeah. restaurant company to buy, but 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 keep keep it right. Know what's in the box and know what's out of the box. I'm glad you said that because I, I acquired something a couple of years ago that I was, I did this move without knowing I was doing a Tillman move. Uh, greatness.com was available, and it was probably overpriced. What was it? Greatness.com. Okay, okay. In my space, you know, there's only one word for domain, and my my word is greatness with the school, right, school right, of greatness right. podcast. Sure, sure. And I wanted to build something bigger than just this show. I wanted to build a media engine around this word that every athlete uses when I see them talking about it on social media and press conferences. One hundred percent. Brands greatness. talk about it in their slogans. Greatness. Built for greatness, pursuit of greatness. I love. And I was that. just like, I, I want to own. That this word. I don't want anyone else to have the word. I want to own it. And there's only one domain in the world. You know, it's like a franchise of one. And I was just like, I I'm want that. And were you able to get it? I bought it, yeah. For, I know, but I'm surprised you could get it trademarked because it's a word. I don't have a trademark, trademark, just the domain. Okay, just the domain, just domain. Yeah, so for I can build a podcast or something. For anything I want to build on it, for okay. my media engine, okay. for yeah, content, for okay. all that stuff, my books, everything that I have, I can build around that word. But it gave, and I haven't used it yet. I just have it. It just redirects to my personal site because I'm, I'm want to build it the right way. I love but for it me, I love it gives that. me peace of mind that no one else can build something and confuse my audience. No, because it, it's such a strong word. Strong. And it's something that we 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 all are after every day. Right. You know, the, the people who want to be. Exactly. Okay. And and so I love that in yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I got to learn how to continue to level up like you're doing now. <laughs> if you want to learn how to make more money and master money in your life, and check out this video right here. That's when I've made the biggest mistakes in my life is when I was desperate and the few times that I was greedy where I thought, oh, I'm gonna slip in there and that's gonna be easy money. Well, what was that? Easy money. Could you share a story of one of those greedy times where you tried to jump in and yeah, get it? Yeah, a buddy of mine.